Okay, hey guys. Um, so we're going to do like a quick mod on this RK84. Um, so I, I know there are a lot of videos out there, um, but this is actually like my first time to mod. Um, so <laughs> this is from a perspective of a newbie, no? So uh, let's let's hope that you know um, this will actually have an effect. I, I'm not changing the keycaps. Um, we're just doing a couple of mods today. I'll, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and uh, hopefully as cheap as possible, no? So. Um, let, let's just do a sound test first. Okay, um, so these are reds. Um, one thing of note, um, I, I just bought this um, re fairly recent, like sometime December. Um, you can actually, hopefully you can see it there, no? Medyo, um, there's like some dirt and grime of the white keys already. Um, I, I wish I actually got the black one so these won't be so seen, but... Um, you know, it's uh, it's only if you're very particular about that. Um, so I, I do want to mention that. Um, so we'll, we'll go through like everything that I got um, uh, in order to do this. Um, first of all, uh, of course, uh, I'll mention the stuff, the the tools that you'll need. So of course, you'll need um, some uh, screwdrivers to open up the PCB and the case. I do have a um, exacto knife um, you can also use scissors as well so I, I do have all of that um, and then of course the puller so I, I just have the one that came with with uh, the box no so in terms of um, like tools that I bought okay the first one is so I, I got this off Lazada pack very poorly by the way um, this was only uh, this is dielectric grease. Uh, 100, this is 11 grams. I got it for about 180 pesos. Um, what's that? That's like three, three something dollars. Um, and then I also, sorry, it's, it's all here on the side because it. And then I also got um, the. This is Crytox uh, 205G0 um, keyboard lube. So you can see here it's a uh, JMK. No? Um, so we're, we're going to be using that as well. Um, and then the other one that we'll be using, I'm just going to show you all the consumables first. No? Uh, where is it? Um, I also got, uh, so this is like for the, for, for like, I, I, I'm not so sure what the mod's called. I think it's called like a holy mod. Um, you basically place this um, underneath the stabilizers um, and, and parang tape lang siya, no? Um, and it's just there to take away the... Hopefully, it makes it sound better, no? Um, uh, let's see how much this came for. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention, no? Um, this was probably like the most expensive thing in the... No, the the keyboard uh, lube this came out to about 420 pesos so that's what roughly eight dollars um, this tape is about 104 pesos only no I, I'm not including shipping of course no and then this one um, very useful no uh, it's a little wide no um, but it is um eva eva foam okay um so this one so it's it's pretty large for the whole keyboard um this is only 25 pesos right um i actually asked for the black one they mentioned that they were out of the black one so they gave me a white one uh, frankly it doesn't matter um it's about two millimeters um and then we'll be placing that as a sound dampening in the bottom of the board no um what else what else um Oh, 
Okay, this one's pretty useful. Um, so this one came from China. Uh, it comes with like a, a small strap as well. So you can just like insert it here. Uh, let's, let's slot that in already, no? Um, so this one is a switch opener and holder. Um, this is about, uh, this is aluminum as well, no? So it just opens like that. There's like two magnets. Um, it's about uh, 1,000, uh, sorry, 1,000, 180 pesos. So let's convert that in my head. One, it's about $3 and something, no? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll place all the links. I'll probably pull that up as well in my, in my, um, in this video. So at least you can see it in real time. I also got some brushes. You can technically use any brush. Um, but, you know, I just got some as well. It's a set of three. Uh, it came out to about $3, about a, a buck each, 50 pesos each. Um, I also got a acrylic plate. So at least we can place all of these keys. Um, and it's going to be easier for me. There's about 330 pesos. So that is about... Um, let me... 330 divided by 50. Uh, $6. Okay, so, okay. Um, oh, and then I have this uh, this thingy. Um, it's called the. Huh. It's basically to hold the, the switches as you, you know, but I, you won't get that lube on your. I know, so, so it just grips it here. Uh, it's called that. Uh, well, it's according to the side, it's called the Graceful Keycap Column Clamp Opener. Uh, it's a grippy thing, no? So this is about 74 pesos, uh, so pretty cheap. Um, that's about a uh, dollar and 20 cents, something like that, no? So first things first, I, I do have a couple of cups uh, that I got from my kids. <laughs> uh, area and then we're just going to uh we just need to pull out all the keycaps no so make sure that this is on the off position first and then let's let's go and pull those out now so let's take these magnetic clamps out uh all right let's start pulling I didn't get any keycaps yet. No, I'm kind of torn as to like this Mario one um, or this carbon version one, but um, okay, we can do some magic. Let's make this a little faster. And there we go. Um, so now I know why um, people always say, you know, people have been looking at those acrylic covers. Because, you know, like I said, this has only been a month. But man, you, you know, we have a dog in the house. Um, you don't see it um underneath the when the keycaps are on but man look, look at all that dirt that gets underneath no um and the only way to clean this is if you you um take out all the keycaps no um i also want to mention like these stabilizers are really wobbly um so i'm not so sure if how many stickers do i have um one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, I was contemplating on whether or not I was going to get stabilizers and just try to make these stabilizers nicer. But anyway, let's let's go ahead and just clean these keycaps really quick. Uh, so I'm just using like a like an old paintbrush um, that we actually use in the house. 
as a duster just to take out all that dog hair and dirt that gets collected underneath. Um, all right, uh, I forgot. Also, you you have to pop off this this skirt. There you go. So let's just pop that off as well. Sorry, my chair is a bit squeaky. Um, and then from here, um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take out all the switches now. So these are red switches. Um, we're going to lube all of these switches. Um, let's fast forward these, this process. All right, and it's out. Now I intentionally left um, one key because I sort of wanted to show you like, I I've watched a lot of videos on this um, and they never really, they just show you pulling it out, right? Um, but you know, since it's my first time, I sort of wanted to give you like a perspective from a beginner standpoint, no? Um, so if you can see here, let, let me see if it's just focused, no? Um, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to like place it um, underneath this side and then you see there's like a small white there no this this white thing so when when you place it it's supposed to press there no oops you see that there you go it's supposed to press down there to release the switch so and then from there you just pull it out. No? So if if you can see here, so it's supposed to go underneath here, and then it's supposed to press that. Okay. So if you can see it there, you see that that small flap. Okay. So um, you know let's let's just clean it a bit more. I, I just usually use um, masking tape just to pick up any of the stray dirt and hairs. Okay. Um, so actually, you know, I, I've, I've actually been um, watching um, someone else's video. Um, I believe, let me just open that video up. It's from uh, Consumer Tech Review. Um, so I do follow his channel a lot. And, you know, um, and that's actually the one that I've been following for this. So you do have to remove a few screws here in the RK84. You've got one two three four five six so six screws okay and um let me show you a trick now so i i do actually like making calicut stuff um and this is what i usually like to do when i have screws so i i have sticky tack over here um, just so the screws won't like roll away you you just place the you just place the head on top of the sticky tack so let's go ahead and take this out. Okay, um, so we have two more screws to go. So let's place that in our, in our sticky pack. Alright, um, and this is just supposed to pop out. Tamaba. Napat. not coming out <laughs> okay ah, there you go okay and then they say there's supposed to be a cable um, we have two cables here um, one goes to the USB area um, and then one goes to the power bank so of 
course, let's remove the the power. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so it's removed now. Um, you've got the switches here. Uh huh. Okay. Let's place this aside first. Set on top of the switches and let's clean this up a bit. Uh, there's like some dust inside of it. Okay. So I guess this is where we place the. Um, the EVA foam no? so this one should be fairly easy um, let's just make sure it's aligned and then let's just press down on the corners can't see everything that I'm doing so you just press down right so you can actually see the outline already no? let's just press down there because it's going to leave an in so if you can see there's like a small indentation um, which will make it easier for us to cut out the foam So this is more of uh, my understanding for the EVA foam. This is more of sound dampening. Um, and you can you can use like I mean it's it was just Christmas, so try to keep some of those toys that you bought your kids, and maybe you can just use the foam there, and you can save 25 pesos, right? Or 20. 50 cents so there you go it's pretty pretty fit uh, just have to we have like a little excess here so let's just take that one out There are these screws that we need to just press down on them. Okay, um, and then we can just use our exacto knife. Just cut it right out. Once again, you don't have to make this like super nice, right? Because, you know, it won't be seen, right? So, that's the first one. just to place the wires through as well yeah. and then let's make one for the battery Okay, and 
then now we want to be able to make the switch go through. So just take your exacto knife and you just make that indent. So now we're cutting it. All right, we're done with the base, no? Um, I, I hope I got this right, no? Seems, you know, pretty secure. Um, let's place this aside. Um, now, I'm not so sure if I can also place EVA foam through here as well, no? Um, let me just get the sheet, no? Uh, Okay, looks like it can go through, right? So let's let's go ahead and do that as well. Um, I believe the screws are here on this side. So once again, you know, I have my sticky tack. We're gonna use the the second sticky tack that I made for this portion. Seems that there are one, four, five screws. Okay, one on each side and then one in the middle. There you go. And that is the chip that actually controls everything. No? So they, they just programmed that. Let's place this PCB on the side. Um, you know, I know we're supposed to pop out the, the um, stabilizers, but I'm gonna keep it there first, so at least I know the spacing of what I need to cut on. All right. Let's get another foam. And the reason why I'm taping it is I don't want it to move. No. So the size is exact. And then from here, we can cut it from there, you know? So I take it back, I want to take out the stabilizers. Um, so in order to take out the stabilizers, um, I believe you're supposed to hit this, you see that small switch there? And then it just pops out on the top, no? So let's take that out first. So just hit it, pops out.
So it is greased now. I can I can feel some grease. I'm just gonna get some tissue. There you go. Now now that it's aligned, let's place the tape. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start. Ooh. So you can get this pre-cut, um, I'm just trying to bring the cost down as much as possible. I mean our channel is called Tipid Tech Tips, right? So um, from here you just get your exacto knife and you just start cutting away, you know? Uh, okay, let's make sure I forgot there's, there's a couple of indents here. Um, this is for the screw. So let's uh, cut that off first. There you go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One. <laughs> 84 times more. 83 times more. So as you can see, it's fairly easy. I'm not going to uh, record this whole process, you know, but you just you just basically keep cutting until you get to the very end, you know? So let's just fast forward this. All right, so here we go. Um, finally got to cut everything, all the holes, um, and then we have the tape around it. Uh, I'm probably just going to leave the tape on it. So the next thing we gotta do is, um, before we place this back, is we gotta place the the stabilizer switch film um, that we got. So this is actually, how many is this? 20 to a pack, there are about 8 per board. 2, 4, 6, 8, no? So what happens is you gotta place it here at the bottom where the stabilizer hits the the PCB. There you go. Now um, I saw this in another um, site where they used a it was more of a 
I believe it was like a medical tape. And then what happened was they just um, placed like some some uh, what is it called? Um, some of the lube on it. Now what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to get the the grease. Uh, let's just pop this grease. We're supposed to get some of the grease and then slather it on there. Okay, um, I believe after that we're supposed to um, just screw this back on. So usually when I screw things back, I, I, I don't I don't like making it all tight at the start so at least you know you can it's easier for you to center all right that's it no um now we work on the stabilizers so when you take out the stabilizers uh what you gotta do is um you just twist this and then it just pops out no? you, can s you can see that um, there's already some grease in it I think this will be easier. So you really want to take the gunk out in between here because we're going to do what's called the holy mod after this all right um so what we're supposed to do with the stabilizers if you can see here um you see you see this portion right here this one you gotta clip it you have to clip that off and then if you turn it around there's another one up here so you're, what you're gonna do is essentially you're gonna make the whole stabilizer flat so I have like uh, a nipper right here 
Let me take that one out. Turn around. And then we take the other side off. Right? And then if you can see now, it is essentially flat, no? So you do that to all of them now. Okay, next is um, so we have these all cleaned and then all of the the top area clipped out. You kind of want to make sure that they're all flat, right? So just make sure it's flat. I need like um, medical tape here. Um, it's like a cloth adhesive tape. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut. We only need a tiny little bit. So okay. Oh, that's enough. Um, And what we want is we want to place this through the hole there. Like so. Okay. And then... Get that nice and tight. And then clip off the excess. Alright, we can use the other one. And then for the other side. Clip off the excess as well. And then we just sort of like the other side you tuck it underneath the hole. And just like pin it so that you know it remains there so the reason why you want to use it like this is um, well first of all you want to make that stabilizer nice and tight right um, the other one is this one also holds a little bit more of the crease in okay All right, um, now that we're done with that mod, um, now we're gonna get our lube and grab your paintbrush, okay, and then we're gonna start lubing our ooh. Okay, you only need a little bit. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start lubing the housing. You just have to lube the, the inside wall a little bit. And then loop the other side.
because that's where that switch comes. You know, that's where it travels. So that's that's where you do it, right? Alright, now that that is done, um, now you want to take your stems, right, and basically, you know, this is where it travels, right, so it, it goes up and down like that, so most of the friction is actually here in these walls, so, so basically, um, you just want to, you know, just place it right there. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So now we're gonna place them back together. So what what you're gonna do is um, so this side is. Um, let's say this is the front okay if that is the front uh, you remember like our stem has like a portion where there's two holes right the other one is just flat and then this side has two holes that's where we tucked in the tape that's sort of where you want it to be facing you want it to be facing the front there okay so basically you can just drop that in no and then that's that's your stem okay so you just keep going until you finish all of them right So basically from here, um, you get your stabilizer bar and you just dip it in to your crease, okay? And then from here, you, you get front, okay? And then you'll see the the first and then you kind of just want to enter at like a 90 degree angle it's going to be a little tight because of the holding mode and then there you go okay um so you get your next one you do the same process so you you dip it inside your there you go and then same thing um, you look for that that first hole that we had a while ago stick it in there and then clip okay do the other side okay now that is done um, we go back to our board okay um, and we just have to pop these back in. Alright, um, and let's just place, oops, this one is wrong. Okay. 
me just snap that back in. You know what? I think I need to cut that one. Hey guys, so I think I screwed up my stabilizers. It it feels mushy. Um, although, you know, um, it's a little bit more stable. And it doesn't go up as fast. So, sorry. And see, do you see that? It's not, uh, it's not going up all the way. So, I gotta try to fix this. So I think I know what's wrong. Um, you see the foam underneath the stabilizers, it's getting mushed underneath. Um, unfortunately, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm gonna have to take out all of the foam underneath. So um let's see if that fixes it uh if it does i suggest like when you do cut it it's best to cut it um out of the view of out of the line of the path of the bar so unfortunately i'm gonna have to open this whole keyboard back up unfortunately so I i'm gonna spare you the details um and i'm going to fast forward to that so this is the hassle part because you know um, I suggest like before you do all of these stuff you double check your stabilizers because now I have to take out all of this So this is what I'm saying, you gotta cut this out. It's it's squeezing the stabilizers. So I'm just gonna create a little bit more space for the stabilizers. So you can see now that the stabilizers have a little bit more space to move.
All right. So now we move into the switches. So what you'll need is, of course, at the bare minimum, you need the lube and the paintbrush, right? So for this one, I'm using like a, f a fine tip paintbrush. Um, you'd want to use a small one. Uh, optional is um, tweezers. Uh, it just helps um, this uh, grabber thing. Um, I've got acrylic for it. And then um, this one will really help a lot is the is the switch uh, opener, right? So um, particularly for the for the RK one, there are four um, latches around it, clamps, right? So basically, what this does is it, it just push, pushes it up. So you can go anyway um, as long as it hits those clamps. You can you can you know flip it around as well, um, and then you just gently push down. Right, and then what I like to do is I like to keep my finger. Well, once it sort of pops up, it, it's re it's not really totally popped off yet. Um, and you sort of like just push it down, right? Um, and then sometimes it doesn't pop off all the way, so you're gonna have to just use your finger, right? So it comes apart into three. So let's just split it up. Um, You've got your you've got your cover over here, um, and then this white thing is the housing. You've got your switch. <coughs> you've got your switch, and then you've got the spring, right? Um, and then there's basically how it works is um, there's actually a circuit inside here, and then when that when this switch you know pushes it down. It pushes it to close that circuit over here. That, that's basically how the mechanical switch works, right? Um, so now let's get into lubing. So the first thing that you want to do is... So what I like to do is I, I grip the bottom, okay? And then get, get some lube. And basically what you're lubing is basically you're lubing all the friction points, right? So as much as possible for the switch you want to get this part because that's where it, it rubs against the, the the housing the most right um, but technically this part also gets uh, rubs as well um, but this one the left and the right one it's the most important one now so you just get a lube uh, a little goes a long way um, I believe for like the five grams that I bought, this should be able to do about two full keyboards. So once you have that fully lubed up, you're done for the switch. No? Um, the next one that you gotta do is the housing. So. Of course, you know, um, like I mentioned, the, uh, the rails get the most, so you're gonna you're gonna want to just like lube up and down that that rail, right? So you lube that the most, um, and then uh, you just want to get the bottom a bit, and then the switch here as well. So the switch gets pressed over here. You see those two earmark ears? So you, you want to get those. And then the, the stem in the middle that holds the, the spring, right? Now you get the spring and then you just get the bottom, right? Here, like that. And then just drop it in. And then you do the top. There you go. Now once that is done, um, you see here, um, you wanna put, so there's like a, an indent on the switch, right? You wanna make that facing the metal portion. Right, the actual switch and then what I do is I, I sort of test it so you can see it um, there you can see it I'm pressing there uh, once that is done you get the housing okay um, 
and then you just shoot the switch in there okay and then you can see like um, which side is which right so the if you can if you can see here um, the the holes are should be aligned like the there, there's like a portion here with holes right and then you just push that in and then just go ahead and test it so I was pretty skeptical because quite frankly like I, I, I already liked I already liked um, the switches um, well basically I had no no point of reference no but if you compare the two it's like this one has a little bit more catch like you can feel the friction on it and then this one it's like it's just like buttery you know it's like it's just so smooth right so um, uh, if you can hear also this one's almost like I, I'm not so sure if you can hear it no there's like no sound to this one this is the one that's loop and then this one you can hear you can hear the clicking so this one's like almost silent like actually it's silent and then this one has one okay so so that's the main difference so I, I actually uh, I was skeptical at first with the lube but um, but not now I'm not you know um, so you just gotta do that you know 80 plus more times okay so I'm gonna I'm just gonna fast forward this for you guys all right so we're finally done um, this took about um, three hours um, like two Netflix movies um, and um, like I mentioned this is going to be more of an experience walkthrough um, as well as a tutorial and at this point um, uh, well first of all so so I, I bought a fa five gram um, uh, what do you call this the sorry the cry crytox lube um, and let me show you like how much of it is left so um, I don't think there's enough for another keyboard here um, I I didn't like go super generous but of course like if you're going to do this much you know um, uh, this is an RK84 right um, you're, you're you're going to you know you want to do it well so you're not gonna like really scrimp out because sighing naman right for your for your time no let's go ahead and attach these um, so I'm gonna let's so let, let me just show you know it, it's fairly simple um, you you just have to you know um, there's the two pins in the bottom and you can see the two pins in the over there sometimes it gets misaligned though no? um, you just have to pop it in right so just place it down and just start popping them in no? so this one fairly easy to do you just keep doing this um, I would recommend like once this is all done plugging in your keyboard and testing all of them because your keyboard does come with extra extra um, switches right uh, the RKs uh, they come with extra four of whatever switch that you pick um, quite frankly I wish they would like add like a little bit more um, maybe maybe like one of each color so at least you can you can test all of them you know sort of like free taste And there you go. 
Okay, so at this point, um, what you want to do is, I, I, I have a keyboard tester that's that's out. Uh, you would want to test all of these keys before you start placing all of these. No? Um, so let's, uh, so I, I've done that already, um, but just so just so it's easier for you to find all the keys um what i do is i do have the keyboard tester you know so at least you know you, you're, you're not screwing up where the keys are um unless you like play what you place your keys in order uh unfortunately me i just you know randomly um drop them in inside this bowl so um this is much easier so at least you know you're using the keyboard tester just to see um, where all the keys are, right? And if they're in the proper, if, if you're placing the keys back in the proper order. All right, guys. So um, that was a really long process. I, I really want to thank you guys. Um, if you actually watch this whole damn video, it's gonna be a pretty long video. Um, but you know, it, it was a really long process. So um, you know, um, let, let's go through a quick um, keyboard sound test. So, um, you, you know, I, I think it might sound better if I had like better keycaps, but um, it does feel a lot better. Um, it does um, sound better as well, but the feel is much better. Like it's so smooth as compared to the first one. Um, so I, I just wanted to give like an over, uh, overall summary to this experience of modding a keyboard. You know, I can't imagine someone doing like the RK100. Um, that's really gonna take the whole day um so a couple of points number one is always check your switches um before installing i i found that some of the switches weren't completely covered um so so like after lubing them you know try, try pressing down on them and just to see and just making sure that everything is um uh, correct um the stabilizers i i think that's the number one thing that you should check before you um, install everything back right um, because like like you saw in my video this is where I screwed up no so you you really want to like you know test all of them before you you install them and place all those other switches and all of these other keys right um, make sure that there's enough space in the back um, so that because that that was the issue with mine right the the, the the bracket thing it was getting pinched by the foam in the back right so that, that could have been avoided if i just started testing everything um the other thing is i wouldn't get you know those those stickers that i got the black ones i, I wouldn't buy that right i i just use this this cloth one instead because it, it achieves exactly the same um feel to it uh and you know since you bought this already don't, don't bother buying that sticker right um the other one is um well once again test everything um so so you won't waste time you know test every step um before every step and before you close up everything before you start placing all those switches um now my own personal uh takeaway from this is um if you don't have time it's actually gonna come out cheaper um with respect to the 
if you have this done, at least here in the Philippines, no. Um, so I'm I, I'm gonna pop up a price here of how much everything costs, right? So number one is the required things at the very minimum. You'll need that dielectric grease um, for the stabilizers and then the crytox. You'll also need the foam in the back um, for for the the that space between the PCB and the plate, as well as the 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 back plate and then the the tape, right? So all of that's gonna cost you about eight hundred ninety-two pesos, right? Optional items are the 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 switch opener, um, but I highly recommend it because it's a pain in the ass if you don't have this. Um, the the column clasp, right? Uh, of course, like the the brushes, they call it a lubing pen. Um, I would not recommend the the switch film. Um, and then the plate as well, right? Um, you can get like a smaller one. I, I believe they also sell like a version of this wherein, like, I, I believe this is a holder or an opener. No, I think there's an opener as well. There's like a version of it that, that it's a holder as well. And you can just do them one, one by one. It, it doesn't really save it may, probably saves you a little bit more time, but not really needed because, you know, there's just so much, right? Now, if you take into account, you know, all the required items, it comes out to 892 pesos. Now, I, I'm going to flash another um, costing here. Um, so, I got this costing from a, uh, a, uh, a supplier here called Kyborg. Um, it's a person named Kylie. Right, I'm gonna drop the link um, for the 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 how you can contact this person on YouTube. Um, but once again, this is only for the Philippines. But basically, the pricing is almost all the same across the board, right? So um, the cost for lubing is six bucks, you know, and then you multiply that by eighty-four. Um, you're roughly at about five hundred pesos or ten dollars, and then. Stabilizers 45 pesos. Um, that that's about I believe there are four, right? One, two, three, four. Uh, at least for this 84, right? There's four. Um, that's gonna set you back about a dollar each, right? Uh, a little less, so that's about 180 pesos or three dollars and sixty cents. And then the foam, uh, the person charges 40 pesos for that, and then the EVA and the back plate 50 bucks. 10 pesos mode, 10, 10 bucks, uh, 10 pesos. Um, total of that, 784. So, or $15, right? So, you know, um, and, and then, you know, take into account, you know, shipping to your area. So, probably like maybe like 100 pesos for shipping or something like that, 200 pesos. Um, this, it's the same cost as buying all, all of the stuff that's required no and you don't have to go through the hassle of like trying to learn all of this stuff but once again you know if if, if you really like this hobby you really want to do all of that stuff go ahead but if you're just gonna get one board you know just just have it done by a professional because you know you can screw it up you can screw it up if you clip the wrong thing in the stabilizers you'll have to buy new stabilizers uh, took me a while to figure out the my, the issue on my own stabilizers um, but you know um, it's really up to you guys so so that's basically um, the takeaway um, that I have from this no but uh, once again um, love the keyboard um, love the feel of it um, and it's uh, I am recording this on December 31 at 12 in the morning so um, Happy New Year, guys. Bye.